I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about CSS3 multiple background images, Ember.js, favicons, and more. Let's check it out. First up is a blog post from Philip Walton called Decoupling Your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Of course, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript form the structural, presentational, and behavioral layers of the front end, and it's important to try and separate them as much as you possibly can. In this article, he goes over a couple of different ways that you can keep that clean separation. I'm just going to talk about two here. The first one is overly complex selectors. Now, I've actually tweeted about this before. Uh, you don't want to have CSS selectors that are too complicated. You want to have stuff that's actually pretty simple, not necessarily tied to any specific HTML with uh, too many classes and too many IDs. Rather, you want to try to create stuff that's reusable as much as possible. It seems a little bit counterintuitive, but after you do it for a while, it starts to become second nature. Next up are classes with more than one responsibility. It can be very tempting to try and roll in a bunch of functionality into a single CSS class, but you should try to separate their purposes a little bit. So you might have one class that styles a button, and then if you have multiple button colors, for example, it might be good to create separate classes for each button color and the different styles that go with each color. And that way you have two separate classes and you can apply them to the same element and then that makes your CSS a lot more reusable. There's much more tips in this article, so I highly recommend you check it out. Very nice, really, really thought-provoking material. Yep. Uh, next up, we have a website called explainshell.com. This is really, really useful if you're unfamiliar with command line arguments and what exactly they do. So it's really great. You can put in practically any command, and then it'll give you a nice diagram of what it means. Now, this is a lot easier to see if you just check out one of the examples on the site. So here is the tar command, and you can click on that, and it breaks it down for you with exactly what's going on. So there's the command, and then you can even mouse over each of the different options, and it will give you a description of what's going on here. So it works with a lot of different commands. I haven't found one yet that it hasn't worked with. And uh, check that out, explainshell.com. Huh, that's funny. I actually read that as explains hell, because, uh, you know, the shell is a really scary place for a designer. Um, <laughs> No, that's legit. I read it that way, too. Oh, okay. But it's explained shell. Yeah. Got it. All right. Next up is another blog post over on Developer Drive about CSS3 multiple background images. Now, in CSS3, you can actually have more than one background applied to the same element. So if you have some transparent images, like some transparent ping, <clears throat> excuse me, pings with an alpha layer, you could go ahead and stack those up and then you could even put like a gradient or a solid color behind them. Does so, that work with animated GIFs? Like, could I have multiple like transparent animated GIFs? Uh, I actually don't know, but I assume you could. I don't see why not. Sounds wonderful. That would that would be great. Yeah, just having multiple animated uh, animated GIFs. Uh, actually, that sounds terrible. So in this post, they describe how you can use a couple of different images and actually reuse the same image. Uh, to create this nice little header here. So I'm actually going to scroll down a bit. There we go. Uh, so they have this grassy texture that they've applied multiple times, and it just kind of repeats across. And then they have other images that they've layered on top. Now, the cool thing about this is that the markup is actually fairly simple. They just have this one header element, and then they have other images that they layered on top. They need to use images there instead of background images because they actually go on to animate those. But the uh, the final demo looks pretty cool. You can actually go ahead and spread out these elements, and it has a little bit of interactivity when you go ahead and hover over. But multiple background images are, you know, a really cool way to maybe save a little bit of bandwidth, not use so many different images or so many different elements uh, just to create the same look. So pretty nifty. I, w I was just kidding about the multiple animated GIFs. That's... It's a terrible idea. It is. 
Uh, next up, Ember.js 1.0 has been released. Uh, Ember.js is a um, JavaScript-like front-end application framework, uh, and it recently hit the 1.0 milestone. So if you aren't using it yet, you should at least check it out. Uh, now, they have a blog post showing kind of what went into it and um, the thinking behind Ember.js. Um, it recently got a little bit of a facelift on the router. Um, testing is great. There's an Ember inspector for Chrome. But if you haven't checked out Ember.js, it's definitely worth taking a look at. Uh, it allows you to write a lot less code when you're creating your JavaScript applications. It has a really interesting templating languages and overall just makes things a lot smoother. So check that out. We'll have a link in the show notes, which you can get to at youtube.com slash GoTreehouse or in iTunes. Search for us at The Treehouse Show. Oh, that's pretty cool. Now, something I learned from one of my coworkers, Andrew Chalkley, is that in the UK they actually say router. Hmm. So if you were confused by Jason saying router, that's that's what he meant. That's the translation. My apologies. Yep. Um, anyway, uh, Favicon cheat sheet is next, and it's basically just this really cool list of ways that you can implement Favicons or fave icons onto your site. It was compiled from a list of several different resources, and this is actually really handy because it's more difficult than it would seem to implement a good favicon. Uh, you have to get the HTML right for a variety of hardware and software devices. You also need to make sure that you have the right images, and of course, you also need to make sure that you have retina images for higher resolution displays. And then there's the actual ICO file itself. You need to make sure that you're using the right file format, again, depending on the hardware or software device that you're targeting. After that, they list out a bunch of helpful tools that can help you create favicons and a bunch of other stuff. Oh, wow, even how to force a favicon refresh. And that's something that's actually super difficult. Every time I'm putting together favicons, I'm always having trouble, like, getting the browser to let go of a particular favicon I've introduced so that I can use a new one. It's kind of kind of crazy. So a uh, really cool list and super helpful. And to go along with that list is a library called favico.js. Wow, yeah. that was a wonderful segue. Wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And favico.js is pretty interesting. It gives you a bunch of options for working with favicons or fav icons as as we say here on the Treehouse Show. Uh, you can do things like add badges to your favicon with different numbers. You can have different animations go along with it. I mean, check this out. Look, you ready, ready for a pop animation? See that? Whoa. Look, keeps popping. Wow. Oh, I should call a doctor. Uh, you can change the color of the favicon. You don't even have to animate. Um, anyway, it's really, really easy to use, as you would expect from basically any plugin we talk about here on the Treehouse Show. So check it out, favico.js. Very cool stuff. Well, next up, if you're an iOS developer, we have something for you. Uh, iOS DevTools is this wonderful list of, you guessed it, iOS DevTools. <laughs> it's basically uh, inspiration for your next app. You can get iOS fonts for your typography. There's also a bunch of cool design resources that you can go ahead and use. And then there's images, icons, editors, documentation, and you get the idea. But it's basically just this really wonderful list of tools that you can use to make your next iPhone app, which of course is something that we teach on Treehouse. So be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Ooh, well, I like ooh, that. Ooh, that, was, uh, ooh, that was a really nice segue. A little nice segue there. It's also pretty important now that iOS 7 is coming out and it's going to be taken over. Definitely. Why do they call it iOS? Why can't it be UOS or WeOS? That sounds a lot nicer, more inclusive. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have a website called UIBox. This is a curated library of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript components. Uh, so check it out. We can have a, a tag here. We click on Accordion, and we have a bunch of different options for menus and toggles. This, uh, these are mostly going to be jQuery plugins, but there's also some different Backbone options. Look, we got one there, Backbone Autocomplete. Uh, so it's just a great place to go to either get some inspiration for something or find that perfect library that you've been looking for. Yeah, that's a really nice uh, set of design patterns. Of course, we've covered that before. There's stuff like Pattern Tap, and I think there's one more I can't think of the name of, but uh, there's I a can't bunch get of them enough. Out there. 
I yeah. can't get enough. I, I'll sometimes spend a whole Saturday just browsing these components yep. and crying deeply. Yep. So that's about all we have time for. I'm Jay Cipher on Twitter. I am at Nick RP. You sound like you're going to say something. Yeah, I did. For more information on anything we talked about, check out our show notes at youtube.com slash gotreehouse or search for us in iTunes at The Treehouse Show. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one, except these videos are actually much, much better, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. And thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. Ha, 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 ha.